Good morning. Welcome to worship. Good to see a few more faces here this morning. As you might have uh, guessed from the tune that the band has played, it's the first week in Advent. Oh, no, sorry. It's um, just checking. We're celebrating our harvest this week. As the band has suggested, our, our opening song, um, which is 58, if it was in the songbook, is Sowing in the Morning, Sowing Seeds of Kindness. We will come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. In a moment or two, um, I've asked if Chris will come and, and lead us in prayer. I'm sure there's many things we would want to take the time to thank God for, for today. I'm just going to make sure I don't get any more dings. And uh, there are many people that we would like to be praying for today as well. And uh, before we pray to help us uh, bring that sense of our need for God and our need for whatever situations that we and our loved ones face, we're also in gratitude. We're going to, to sing, the Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. I will trust in you alone. It's a determination to trust God through whatever we're going through today. So we'll sing this through together. And then Chris will come and lead us in prayer.
Shall we pray? Dear Lord, as we gather in this your house this morning, we'd just like to thank you for bringing us here. For some, it may be the first time they've been in your house for many months, Lord, but we just pray that as they come back into this building, Lord, they will feel your presence. They will feel the warmth of the fellowship and be glad to be here once again. Lord, we pray for our, our local community, our local situation here, Lord. We don't know everybody around here, but we know that you do. We know that you know the needs and the wants and desires of each and every one. And Lord, we just pray that you will come close to them today. And Lord, we think wider afield to our national situations. Lord, we think of everything which goes on in our, our lives, and we sometimes think it's the biggest thing that ever has happened. But then, Lord, we need to put that into context to the world situation, Lord, where there are people who don't have the basic food requirements that we would take for granted. Lord, we just pray for everything in your world that once again it will become what you want it to be and that everybody will have enough for what they need. Lord, we pray especially for our harvest at this time. We, we think of some of the, the gifts we have on, on show today in front of us. Lord, I'm sure we don't all know who's involved in each of those processes from the farmers to the delivery drivers to the, the supermarket attendants. But Lord, we just thank you for each and every life that's involved in that. All of the input which goes to give us the food on our plates each and every day. That our wants are not wanting and our needs are supplied. Lord, we just thank you that, that you keep us safe. Lord, but we just, we ask this time, we, we keep our ears open and we're eager to learn. And we want to know more about you. For Lord, everything comes from you and everything is in through you. This we ask in and through your name. Amen. It's an interesting year to celebrate harvest, isn't it? With all the talks of shortages and shelves not as full as they were. Maybe we're starting to appreciate it more. Starting to appreciate those who would harvest. Because that seems to be one of the problems. Starting to appreciate the delivery drivers. Especially those who deliver fuel for those who may have been struggling to fill up. I've seen some, uh, some interesting things doing the rounds. A picture from a BBC News uh, broadcast where the name of the person at the petrol station was called Phil McCann. Seems an appropriate name for somebody reporting on fuel so shortages. And whilst I'm making you laugh, not that this necessarily will, apparently one of the Spice Girls... Out of all the Spice Girls, if anyone was going to be able to get you petrol, then uh, Jerry can. So I'm going to make up for, for all of that bad humour by uh, introducing the band. <laughs>
We're now going to have a Bible reading of Ash Janet. She will bring that for us this morning. And it's taken from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 13, and verses 31 to 35. The Bible reading this morning is entitled The Parables of the Mustard Seed and the Yeast. <clears throat> he told them, that was Jesus, another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed which a man took and planted in his field. Though it was the smallest of all seeds, yet when it grows, it is the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree so that the birds come and perch in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed it into about 30 kilograms of flour until it worked all through the dough. Jesus spoke all these things to the crowd in parables. He did not say anything to them without using a parable. So was fulfilled what was spoken through the prophet. Amen. So we have arrived at that time of year where we celebrate harvest. And as I said earlier, it seems a, a strange time, particularly in the UK, to celebrate harvest with all of these talks of shortages and the, and the harvesting issues, where we're hearing crazy things like food being left to rot in the field for lack of help. But we're also in this post-pandemic, or we hope post-pandemic phase, where there's been a, an increasing amount of discussion in some quarters about a concept called rewilding. So you know I've been working through a series of things that all seem to begin with re. And I thought rewilding is being talked about in a lot, and I, and I believe it's a concept we find in Scripture. And some of the, the talk has been an acknowledgement of how maybe we have overworked nature. And we might have had a, a hand in how this has impacted society. And maybe there are things that we can do to try and redress the balance Maybe we can even let some places become wild again. Now, I have a sneaking suspicion, and partly from this scripture that we heard earlier, that Jesus may well have agreed with this, especially in this description of the kingdom of heaven, growing from something incredibly small, but then growing into something much wilder. You could even say that it becomes infectious in the way that it spreads. Although, obviously, in the situation we're in, you've got to be careful how you talk about that as well. But I can say it's always effective and it's always inclusive as well. Now, one of the problems we face when we contemplate our part in building the kingdom of God is comparison. We compare ourselves to others and how they do things. And we perceive that they're far more successful at it and they're far better at it than we are. And then we make the mistake that they've, all, they've got it all sorted. They've got everything in order. And then we think, well, Obviously, there's no way that we can do that because we're, we're far too small. We're far too insignificant. We're far too whatever other description you might want to put. And it's something that I've said before. Something I have difficulty believing, but I do believe it's very important that we grasp hold of this. None of us are too anything to be used by God. And none of us are just a whatever. I'm not just a young person. I'm not just somebody who's retired and can't do anything anymore. I'm not just somebody who doesn't know enough. We are not just anything. What does Jesus have to say? He says that the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed which a man took and planted in his field. 
Though it's the smallest of all seeds, yet when it grows, it is the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree so that the birds come and perch in its branches. From something as small and seemingly insignificant as a mustard seed comes something way, way bigger and greater than we might ever assume. So none of us are to anything. None of us are only anything. God can use us and God will use us, any of us and every one of us. Also takes me back to a verse in the Old Testament from when the people of Israel, who had been in captivity for 70 years, taken away from their own land, are allowed to go back and rebuild Jerusalem after their 70 years in exile. And some people just thought, this task is beyond us with the ragtag bunch of people that we've got left. What did God have to say through his prophet Zechariah? Who dares despise the day of small things? Who dares despise the day of small things? There is no person, no thing, nobody, including you, including me, that can ever be so small or insignificant or anything else that we are beyond God's ability to use us. Now, some of you may be uh, good gardeners here. Some of you have, I mean, I've been around a lot of your gardens over the, the last 18 months. Fortunately, you haven't been around mine because I'm not a good gardener. I can grow some stuff, but I'm not one of these people who is very good at keeping a, a neatly manicured garden. And I suspect some of my neighbours sometimes despair of us. But I've had some successes this year, and I've had some disappointments as well. Like my tomatoes, which seem to be going brilliantly, then got damaged by storms. And some of us would much prefer a well-manicured, neat and tidy garden. Others prefer something a little bit wilder. I quite like the idea of growing wild meadow if I had enough garden to do that and if I got the impression that my neighbours would tolerate that. We may have specific ideas of what we want to grow and where we want to grow them, and we'll have specific ideas of exactly how we'll want it to look. But the mustard seed isn't like that. And the mustard seed, if you're going to grow it safely in your garden, you're going to have to contain it. If you want to keep your garden neat and tidy, and looking smart. But the kingdom of God isn't to be manicured and controlled into exactly how you want to look either. Like the mustard seed, the kingdom of God works best when it grows wild. Again, when Jesus said, though it's the smallest of all the seeds, when it grows, it's the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree. It grows out of all proportion. We don't need to think about how we're going to contain, how we're going to make the growth of the kingdom of God look good. We just need to let it grow. And sometimes it doesn't look as good and neat as we'd like to think it would look. And again, when we compare ourselves to other people, we hear the stories of, of people coming to faith and it all sounds so nice and neat and very pleasant. But the truth is, often it's bumpy and irregular and everybody grows at a different rate and in a different way and some people really struggle to settle in and some people adapt to it quickly. And that's okay. Okay. We don't need to contain the growth that God brings. And I would go so far as to say we really ought not to try. Because I think if we try and rein it in, if we try and tame it, we lose its beauty, we lose its magnificence. And it might not grow how we would want it to do. It may not look like we'd want it. It may not happen where we want it to be. But maybe that's the point. 
God's kingdom, him being in control, letting him grow it wherever it will grow. The kingdom isn't there for us to control and fit around everything. It's not there to be ornamental and to look nice. We ought not try to control God, but let God control us. Let him have his way with us if we really want that full kingdom effect. Jesus then goes on to use another analogy for the effect that the kingdom of God has. He says that the kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into about 60 pounds of flour until it worked all through the dough. Just one small amount of yeast can affect a whole big batch. When used well, the kingdom values and the source of those kingdom values. So let's just remember, it's not about applying a set of rules and regulations. It's about bringing Jesus into the mix. It affects everything. You can't contain it just to the first so much of life. If it's really going to affect, it's going to affect everything. It becomes very difficult to contain God's kingdom to one small area. Somehow it just seems to taint the whole lot. It affects everything, but in the best and the most glorious of ways. We can't just opt to have Jesus in some parts of our lives and leave others off limits. You can't put the yeast in the flour with the expectation that it's only going to affect the bits of the flour that you want it to affect. It will affect the whole lot. There is something about the kingdom of heaven, about the kingdom of God, which becomes infectious, which spreads. It can start small and seemingly insignificant, but then it spreads until it affects the whole person, the whole family, the whole church, the whole city, maybe even the whole world, if we let it. But unlike the infections that we've been hearing about apparently non-stop the last 18 months, and unlike the desires of people like Chris Whitty and John Van Tam, we want the R number to be well above one. We want it to spread quickly and wildly. Because this is the kingdom of heaven we're talking about. Now, when we choose to rewild our lives and rewild the world with the kingdom of God. We also need to reflect on the fact that it's profoundly effective and welcoming. As I've said, it doesn't just grow where we planted it. It's not just nice to look at or to use for cooking in the case of mustard. It has an effect on everything around it. Jesus said that though it is the smallest of all seeds, yet when it grows, it's the largest of the garden plants, becomes a tree, so that the birds come and perch in its branches. Now, some would suggest that the image of the wild birds might have implied the welcoming of those who had been thought to be unclean, the Gentiles. That this was not Jesus just talking to Jewish people, this was destined to spread way beyond now, whether it really was that intention or not, I think we can see that where the kingdom of God is let loose and allowed to grow, it does bring in all kinds of people. Particularly as the Salvation Army, where we believe in the welcoming of the whosoever. But then when we welcome in the whosoever, it means we get the whosoever and we get all kinds of of strange and wonderful people. I am definitely not going to look in any one place when I say that. As well as thanking God this week for our harvests of food that we enjoy, we can also thank God for the harvest of people who flock to this great, wild, expansive, infectious kingdom that he brings. I think this year we can determine that we will allow the kingdom seed that is within us to grow wild, to not try and contain it,
because if we really want it to grow, then let's be honest, we can't contain it. Let it affect everything. Even when it's not convenient, even when it pops up in the places where we'd rather not have it come out there, thank you very much. We can determine just to allow the kingdom of God to change everything to change all parts of our lives, to become that thing that spreads throughout the whole batch. I would encourage us to do that this year, to rewild our lives with the kingdom of heaven. Then we won't have to worry about not having enough people to harvest because when we let it grow wild, the people will come in they'll come in and help and then they will spread it as well before we know it we'll see transformation we'll see people changed we'll see society changed as God's wild kingdom grows throughout us throughout this church throughout this city and nation let's pray heavenly father we thank you that uh, that you have a kingdom that desires to be wild as well as beautiful. Give us the faith to be able to let you be you and to let you transform us as you see fit. Lord, we thank you for all your, your goodness. And we pray that this year we'll be especially grateful for all that you have done in us, for the way in which your kingdom has grown in us and for the way in which you supply our physical needs as well as our spiritual needs. We pray that in the name of Jesus. Amen. So we're going to finish with another uh, traditional harvest song this morning. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll have the band for it, I think. That's okay. We plough the fields and scatter the good seed on the land. Now, at some point... I'm going to try and retrieve a, a good friend of mine who died a few years ago, had written alternative words to this. And one day I will try and retrieve them because he'd done a modern version of We Plow the Fields with Tractors. And rather than just forestry, I, if, if I actually do manage to get hold of a copy of them, I would want to check them out first because I know who this person was and some of the things he might have said in it could have been quite interesting. But we plough the fields and all good gifts around us are sent from heaven above. So thank the Lord for all his love. So again, I'd encourage us to stand if you're able and willing as we sing this closing song through together.
So Heavenly Father, today we give you permission to grow wild in our lives, in our church, in every area where we are. Grow wild in and through us. We pray that in the name of Jesus. Amen.